I'm going to take a moment to go off script here because as I was recording these videos and as I was editing them and putting them out and publishing them, I was kind of trying to put myself in a mindset of if I was watching this series and I kind of came to the conclusion that by this point, if I was watching this, that I would already probably be brave enough to have imported some audio, maybe some stems or some mono audio regions, just raw regions from another, from a Pro Tools session. And I would start messing around with things and trying to get a feel for working in this DAW. So with that being said, I wanted to kind of interject and, and go off script here. And I wanted to go over something that is really kind of at the heart of Studio One, which is a, a, a drag and drop style workflow and the different types of things you can do with a drag and drop style workflow. Okay. So to get started, what do I mean by this? Well, it's pretty self-explanatory, but let's, for example, take a look at creating things like just basically adding um, adding plugins to different tracks. And, and also we'll talk about adding sends and some other stuff as well. So if you want to put a plugin on any one of these tracks over here, let's go to open up our browser and let's go to our effects tab. Now with your effects tab, you can sort by different categories. For example, you could sort flat, you could sort by folders, uh, you could sort by vendor, or you could sort by type. Now, Studio One will support VST, VST3, and audio units. I have audio units disabled because I don't like having all my plugins doubled up. And in my personal experience, VST versions work better than the audio units. That might not be the case for the new M1 Max. So anyways, let's switch over to Vendor, which I find is probably um, a folder structure that a lot of Pro Tools users would be familiar with because this is the way we see a sort order in Pro Tools. So if we take a look at any one of these folders, let's go to, for example, let's go to something third party. So let's open up our soft tube plugins over here. If we take a look at these, notice we have a list. Notice we also have some icons on some of these plugins. Let's take a look at how we would go about setting this up. Well, first and foremost, the drag and drop philosophy, it is super simple. If I wanted to instantiate this plugin, I can just drag this to the actual track. Now, when I drag this, it will just automatically load this plugin. Now, we can drag it on the actual track, or if we wanted to, we could drag it into the console, and this is going to do the same thing. Something else I want to point out is that by holding command and click, hold, and dragging away, we have the ability to remove plugins. And this also goes for sends if we had a send. Now, we're going to take a look at sends in a moment, but the other thing to take note of is that this will not only apply to the track that you drag it over if it's a single instance, but if you have multiple tracks selected, let's switch over to something uh, by personas. For example, let's say that I wanted to put... Uh, a plugin. In this case, we're going to use Pro EQ on all three of these tracks or channels as they're in the console. I can just drag this over and then this is going to instantiate the plugin that we dragged over. Now, if you like seeing uh, plugin thumbnails, this is something that can be available by clicking the show thumbnails. If you'd rather see it flat, then you can just click flat. We have the ability to make any one of these plugins into a favorite. It's very easy to do. So for example, let's go to analog delay. I'm going to right click this and I'm going to make this a favorite. Now, when you make it a favorite, you'll notice that there's a star that shows up to the left of it. The other thing to take note of is that although we have a vendor folder over here, in the very top, we have kind of like this main menu where we have an ability to store effects chains, which as you can imagine is a series of different plugins that are instantiated together. Uh, we have mix effects. This is something very similar to the way Luna extensions work, if you're familiar with this DAW, but truthfully, this is something that Studio One has had uh, for many years before Luna was even out. So uh, we have different console emulations that we can have and some different tape modes, depending on whether you're running some third-party plugins. So for example, soft tube tape. We're gonna get into this a little bit later on though. But what I wanted to point out is the favorites folder. Anything that you've marked as a favorite, this is going to show up in this favorites folder. Now, if you're the type of person that likes to work with a very specific set of tools that you like to turn to over and over again, 
then this is a great way to be able to work because you can basically have all your top used plugins in these in this folder over here and then you could essentially just leave the favorites folder open and then you would just be dragging and dropping all of the plugins that you want the, your most used plugins just dragging and dropping them right onto either the track over here or the channel over here or if you have the console closed you also have the ability to drag something over from for example um, let's choose the bass track and I could say okay well I want the decapitator over here so anywhere you want to drag, this is going to be, uh, be a really quick way to instantiate plugins. Now, the really cool thing also with Studio One, and we're going to get into this later when we cover macros, but if you have plugins that are absolutely like your most used, let's say, for example, a, a utility EQ that might go on everything. So, for example, we talked about Pro EQ and how this is um, something that can be loaded by just highlighting all these channels and dragging and dropping. We also have the ability to create macros, which can create a string of commands together. So if I have something where I need an EQ across everything, let's get rid of Decapitator as well, then this is just a matter of selecting all of these. I can actually create a macro and assign that to a key command and boom, I've just loaded Pro EQ on all of these and I didn't have to even open the browser. We're gonna get into creating macros later, but I just wanted to kind of show this uh, in terms of how we can do this. Now, I'm gonna remove all of these for a moment. Let's talk about creating an icon in the case that you might want to have a plugin that you use on a regular basis and you want to add it to your favorites and you definitely want to see the icon so that you can be able to add this. Now, I'm going to scroll over to something here. It doesn't really, really matter what it is, but um, I have icons created for most of my absolute favorite plugins. Let's try to find something that I don't. Okay, so I've got the suppressor created. What are some other ones that I use? What about my sound toy stuff? Looks like I have all the main ones I use for sound toys. Okay, let's just go with, for example, uh, Pan Man. So what I'm gonna do, if I wanna create an icon, it's very simple. I'm just gonna drag this over. This is going to open up the plugin. Now from this menu over here, we can create a, a update plugin thumbnail. When we update the plugin thumbnail, Notice now that we have an icon available for this. And then, of course, if ever I wanted to make something a favorite, right click and I can make this a favorite. Now, let's say that you want to basically not use the favorites folder and you just want to create icons for all your favorites. Maybe by accident you uh, created an icon for something that you didn't want to. So in this case over here, I can right click and I can delete this thumbnail and that will get rid of it. One thing that I want to take a look at over here is let's scroll up to the top and let's open up our favorites. When we talk about creating um, effects sends. So let's grab a reverb, one of my absolute favorite reverbs that I use all the time. Let's just go with vintage verb. Let's say that I wanted to have a reverb on all of these tracks over here. Uh, I'm just going to drag and drop this right into the send section. This will automatically create the effect send. The effect send will be named whatever the name of the plugin is. And as you can see over here, this, this creates an effects track. It's solo safed and all the routing is done. Now, if you wanted to rename this, I usually just name this Valhalla. So let's just rename this right now. Then this will automatically rename this and it will rename this one over here. Now, one thing I wanted to point out is that if you're not seeing your effect sends, you have this little tab and you have this drag and drop area. We can basically hide these. And, and if we have too many effects, maybe we have five different effects or something like that, we can drag this down. Another thing to point out is with respect to the console view, there's two different views that we can have. Actually, there's more than two, but let's focus on two different views for the docked console right now. I'm gonna close my browser for a moment. Notice we have small and large. When we click large, we basically get this area up top where we would see all of our effect sends and all of our inserts. But if we're in the small format, we don't see any of that, but notice we have this little expand flap over here. And if I click this, this will allow us to see any effects that we have, any inserts, and also any sends. So if we don't see it, like I said, we just scroll down to the bottom, this is a nice way if you're working on a, a system that has a very limited um, screen real estate, then you have access to, for example, let's add a Pro EQ and also maybe I'll add a mix tool. These, these, um, these key commands to add 
to add plugins to selected channels that will really supercharge your workflow especially if you use certain plugins a lot like for example if i wanted to add some of my favorite third-party plugins very easy for me to just add console one a mix tool anything i want now while we're on this topic, like I mentioned, if you're working on a smaller system, this will be something to consider. Also, we have other console options in terms of what we can see. So if you wanted to see more things or less things, so for example, I could say, well, I want to see my channel notes, which is the same as our mixer notes and pro tools, with one exception being that, again, this is dynamically resizable. And also I could, for example, choose to see my input controls, which will allow me to invert the polarity on my stereo channels. And also we have a pre-fader mix trim that'll allow us to basically gain stage our whole entire song. If everything is too loud, then I could just pull everything down together. Very useful controls to have access to. The other thing I want to take note of here is let's go back to our large view for a moment. Um, I guess I should talk really briefly. There's also a narrow view if you want to see this. I don't really care for this too much and I never use it, but it gives you the meters up here. Um, and of course, um, our, our faders and everything are over here. I don't particularly care for it because it's just too congested of a view, but that is something that you can check out. But the other thing I wanted to talk about is, for example, we mentioned that the drag and drop philosophy this really applies to anything. So let's instantiate a pro EQ on this track over here. Let's say I wanted to drag this pro EQ with very specific settings like this. Let's say I wanted to drag this over. Also, a side note, if you want to have a micro view of things like your EQ curves, you can just single click a pro EQ plugin and you'll be able to see a micro view. Certain plugins have these views. They can be useful, um, not necessarily to adjust the parameters, although you could but more so just to kind of visually see what's going on. If I wanted this Pro EQ to be applied across these two tracks over here, all I would have to do is highlight these two tracks and just drag this Pro EQ over. Now this has been added. Now another thing that we could do is if, for example, I wanted this send to be applied across this track, I could just drag and drop this into the send insert, and then I will be able to basically copy these different um, settings into anything I want. And then with all of these selected, I can click here and I can remove all. One other thing that's really useful is we can drag individual plugins over. So for example, I could drag mix tool across to all of these, or if I just wanted it on one track, I could drag it over here. We'll use our command click hold drag to remove this plugin. But let's say that you had a really nice effects chain happening and you wanted to drag this over to something else. If you drag a single plugin, you're going to be able to drag over just that effect into this channel. But let's say you wanted to drag over everything. We could click, hold, and drag from the top, and now we're dragging over the entire effects chain. So not only one plugin, but two of them. And as you would expect, if I wanted to drag this effects chain over to both of these, I would just have to highlight both of these, right? Let's go like this. Now I've dragged over the entire effects chain. Another thing to make note of is that if you have multiple sends, so let's open up our browser and let's grab a delay. Um, uh, let's use H delay. I'm gonna click, hold and drag this one over here. Now this is going to create, you guessed it, it's going to create a, an effects return for this delay and it will automatically be named H delay stereo. Maybe I'll just come over here and I'll just change this to H delay. Okay, and I'll also reposition my uh, effects insert so it's over here. I mentioned that we can drag over individual sends like this directly over to any track, but we also have the ability to drag the entire uh, send chain. So let's say that you had five sends, maybe you have 10 sends. This is the same principle. If I wanted to click, hold, and drag, now I can drag all of these sends over to this individual track. Now, if I wanted to do that for multiple tracks, same thing. Click, hold, drag. It's a little awkward with the send because you have to drag it down but without repositioning this. So you kind of have to drag on an angle and you have to be very deliberate with this. Sometimes I mess it up. But click, hold, drag, and now we can drag this send chain to everything. Now, while we're talking about creating a sends, when we talk specifically about delays, I want you to take note of something that is a little bit different in that with respect to, for example, a delay, notice that on our effects returns, 
we don't actually have a send. Now, it's a common practice for things like such as delay that you would create an effects return, an aux return, for example, and you would use that for a delay, and then you would send the actual delay return to a reverb itself. So we don't have sends on effects returns in Studio One. So for this reason, I would advise instead of creating a send to create a bus. Now, when you're talking about creating a bus, we know that we can right click and we can add a bus, but then we have to manually do all the routing and choose this send and everything like that. And that's not quite the way I would prefer to work. So let's right click and remove this. I wanna show you a shortcut. Let's say that I wanted to, let's go with a different delay. Let's go with Echo Boy, for example. If I wanted to create uh, a send from this particular track using Echo Boy, if I click, hold, and drag, and I drag this into the send area, notice it says add effects channel, but when I hold the option or alt modifier, notice that it changes to bus channel. So this toggles. This allows us to basically use a bus channel in place of an effects return. I'm gonna let go. And now we've created our Echo Boy send, but notice in this case, it's created it on a bus channel versus an effects channel. I'm gonna solo save this, and now, lo and behold, we have our reverb send that's available on the Echo Boy effects return. Also, when it comes to solo safing, effects returns are solo safe by default, but a bus channel, uh, if I'm using it for an effects return, I would hold down shift and I can click the solo key. Now this is uh, solo safe. And then of course, I can just drag and drop my reverb into here, and now we have a reverb send. Another cool thing is, let's say you're in a very, very busy session. You have got maybe a hundred tracks and you have tons of effects returns. You're using lots of reverbs and delays and stuff like that. If you want to have access to the plugin that you're using for this particular send, all we have to do is just double click the send and it will open up the plugin. This to me is such a useful feature because sometimes you can get lost in a session. Now, another cool thing that we'll take a look at, and then I think we're probably close to wrapping this up, is if I wanted to, if I was really happy with this particular setup in terms of my effects chain and my sends, let's say I wanted to apply it to another track altogether. We could drag the individual plugins across one at a time, or we could drag the whole entire effects chain over, and then we could drag the whole entire send chain over. But there's another easier way that we can do this. Let's say also that it had a cool pan setting and we were really happy with everything. Maybe we were working with a duplicate track. We can just right click, we can copy these channel settings and then we can come into our console and we can paste these channel settings and it's gonna copy everything. It's gonna copy the inserts, the sends, uh, the level on terms of the fader and the panning. Let me undo this for a second and I wanna talk about one more thing. These sends are going to look a lot different than Pro Tools, especially if you're used to the way Pro Tools is, and especially if you're used to basically expanding each one of the sends into a mini fader, or what happens when you click it, you have this free-floating fader where you have the option for pre-fader, uh, muting, panning, things like that. This is a little bit different in that it's a lot more congested, and at the time that I'm doing this video, uh, we don't have basically any way to expand this any further than this. Now, we have our name, we have the level, all the sends default to minus six, which is something that's just written in the program. It's not anything we can change. We have the ability to change between pre-fader or post-fader. And also, even though it's really hard to see, there is a panning below here. So if you wanted to adjust this, you could adjust your pan. One common thing that I would use this for is maybe I have something that's panned predominantly to the left and in terms of giving it some spatial context, I might want to pan my reverb over, maybe equal amounts fully over or a little bit over to the right. So I'm sending out to the effects return in the opposite order, or maybe I want it to follow that main pan. There isn't an option right now though, as I'm, time I'm doing this video, to basically have it set to follow the main pan of the track that you're sending from. The drag and drop philosophy. It's going to really change the way you work once you get used to it. But I'll be honest, coming from Pro Tools and the way that things work, it did take me a bit to get used to because I was just so used to keyboard shortcuts, which is why I like to have most of my predominant plugins that I use available as a macro 
So I don't have to do anything with menus. I could just fire off my macro and then those plugins are loaded instantly on anything that I have selected. Now, last thing I want to talk about, and we'll close the browser and let's close this mixer, is let's say you're working with a track and you just have the inspector open. It's also worth mentioning that these plugins over here, uh, the drag and drop, if I could, for example, have this one selected and then I could just drag this to anywhere that I want. I could drag this Pro EQ here and then I've instantiated this Pro EQ on this track, or let's go back to this track over here. I could drag the entire effects chain right up to here, or I could drag um, different sends over, and this kind of goes hand in hand with if we wanted to drag this over here. So you're gonna get used to it. it it's, a, it's, it's going to be a new way of working, but once you do get used to it, it can really speed up your workflow in terms of allowing you to just drag and drop from here to there, from here to there. Um, if you have an EQ that works for, maybe one thing that I do a lot is, I would, for example, have a set of background vocals. Let me just duplicate this um, or kind of emulate this workflow. Let's say I had a bunch of background vocals and to start off with, I had them all bust out and I would just call this like BG Vox or something. If I had a Pro EQ, on this to start off with, I might start off with something simple, like an EQ on the actual bus channel. Now, these individual harmonies might be my lows and my mids and my highs, so they might require a different EQ. So as I'm getting a rough mix together in the studio with the client or a tracking mix, I might do this on the bus channel. But then once that's done, I might say, okay, I wanna have this applied to the individual channels because I'd, I would rather Maybe I want to put a compressor here and I want to EQ things beforehand. It's just a matter of highlighting these and dragging it over. And then once that's done, we have a pro EQ across all these. And then I just get rid of this one. And then at this point, I could instantiate a compressor on here. And then this would already be a really good starting point. And then, of course, we can see the micro view if we wanted to see what we're working with. So that's it for next for this one. In, in the next one, I think we're going to add another... Um, I'm going to punch in or... I'm going to kind of snip in another video in this series, which is going to be uh, comparing audio suite to event effects. And we'll also touch upon ARA and how that integrates. So we'll catch you for more in the next one.